TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman has reportedly stated that Israel has the right to retain some, but unlikely all, of the West Bank. The United States has slapped another round of sanctions on the Islamic Republic of Iran, this time against its petrochemical industry. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif sent a veiled threat to the United States saying the Americans cannot declare an economic war on Iran and expect to remain safe. There was high drama at sea off Israel's Mediterranean shores yesterday when IDF Special Naval Forces were called in to storm a Panamanian flagged cargo vessel. The MSC Canberra container ship was some 9 kilometers off Israel's northern coast, which is equal to about 5.6 miles, when defense authorities were alerted that an apparent stowaway had set the cargo vessel ablaze, destroyed property, and became uncontrollably violent. As a result, the mainly Russian and Turkish crew members barricaded themselves within the command bridge in accordance with emergency protocol. After transmitting a distress call to the Israeli Navy, the Shayatid 13 elite naval unit was deployed to handle the situation. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, during the incident, IDF Navy forces along with Israeli police searched the vessel quickly and efficiently in coordination with the ship's captain. During the searches, a hidden passenger was spotted, neutralized and subsequently transferred to Israeli police. The suspect was later identified as a Turkish national. He is currently undergoing police interrogation to ascertain whether he had concealed his presence on the ship with the ultimate intention of illegally infiltrating Israel. Now in other news, it has been cleared for publication. The Israeli Navy had intercepted two Palestinian vessels that deviated from the designated fishing zone off the southern Mediterranean coast of the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. According to Israel's security agency Shin Bet, the vessels were on their way from the Palestinian enclave towards Egypt's Sinai coast as part of an attempt to smuggle prohibited means into the Gaza Strip, including materials used by the Hamas terror organization to manufacture missiles. In response, the Israeli Navy's 916th Fleet launched an operation against the Palestinian vessels, which were caught shortly thereafter. <laughs> של שתי סירות פלסטיניות לחרוג מהאזור המותר לדייג ולהבריח אמצעים וחומרים אסורים לרצועת עזה. הסיכול היה ביצוע מוצלח בזכות מערך שליטה ומערך מודיעים מתקדמים בשילוב כוחות הים של פלגת 916. הניסיון הזה של הברכת חומרים ואמצעים מסוכנים לרצועת עזה וחריגה מהאזור המותר לדייג ברצועה הינו חציית קו אדום. לוחמי פלגת 916 ימשיכו ויפעלו לסיכול ניסיונות כאלה גם בעתיד. It is important to know that while the incident occurred last month on the 11th of May, the information regarding the smuggling attempt was cleared for publication this weekend because of security considerations. Meanwhile, an indictment was submitted against four Palestinian suspects who operated the referred to vessels. The offenses include being active members of a terror organization, conspiring to commit murder, training and guiding for terror purposes and attempting to provide services to a terror organization, among additional charges. Now to another matter, U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman has reportedly stated that Israel has the right to retain some, but unlikely all, of the West Bank. In an interview from his Jerusalem residence with the New York Times Daily, Ambassador Friedman asserted that under certain circumstances, the Jewish state would have the right to annex parts of the disputed territory. He declined to indicate how the United States would react to such a move. The statement comes in response to an election pledge by Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu in which he vowed to annex parts of the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria to modern-day Israel, two out of three internationally disputed territories that make up the commonly known West Bank region. In response to TV7's request for comment, an unnamed U.S. State Department official said in a written statement, the administration's position on settlements has not changed. No plan for unilateral annexation by Israel of any portion of the West Bank has been presented by Israel to the United States, nor is it under discussion. No further details were available regarding Israel's intentions about potentially annexing parts of the West Bank as the Prime Minister's spokesman refused to respond on the report. 
Now in other news, the United States has slapped another round of sanctions on the Islamic Republic of Iran, this time against its petrochemical industry. The new punitive economic measures specifically target the Persian Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company and 39 of its subsidiaries and foreign-based sales agents for their provision of financial support to the economic division of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, which was designated by Washington as a terror entity. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said in a statement that by targeting this network, we intend to deny funding to key elements of Iran's petrochemical sector that provide support to the IRGC. The latest restrictions come in addition to another set last month aimed at Iranian export revenues from industrial metals as the White House continues to ratchet up pressure on Tehran over its nuclear and ballistic missile programs and for waging proxy wars in the region. Meanwhile in Vienna, IAEA Director General Yuki Amano voiced concern about increasing tensions over the Iranian nuclear issue while underscoring the crucial importance that Iran fully implements its nuclear-related commitments under the JCPOA, acronym for the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which is the technical term for the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran. During his opening remarks at a meeting of the International Atomic Energy Agency's Board of Governors, Amano insisted that the nuclear-related commitments entered into by Iran under the JCPOA represents a significant gain for nuclear verification. That is why Amano voiced hope that ways can be found to reduce current tensions through dialogue and urged the Islamic Republic to fully implement its nuclear commitments. The agency's director general also pointed to Tehran's Supreme National Security Council announcement in which it issued an order to stop some of Iran's measures under the JCPOA. Despite the referred to announcement, Amano insisted that evaluations regarding the absence of undeclared nuclear material and activities in Iran continue. In response to Amano's remarks, former IAEA Deputy Director General Oli Heinonen told TV7 that it appears to me that Iran has not informed the agency directly about stopping some measures, but lets the IAEA find it from the news and see changes on the ground as they come. Contrary to the past, when problems started to arise, the IAEA was kept informed through written communications, which were reflected in the reports. Meanwhile in Tehran, German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas held a long meeting with his Iranian counterpart Muhammad Javad Zarif, during which they discussed ways to preserve the faltering nuclear agreement, which sustained a detrimental blow since the United States decided to withdraw from the deal and reintroduced a long list of crippling sanctions against the Ayatollah regime. Following the meeting, the German and Iranian top diplomats jointly underscored their common goal of salvaging the nuclear deal. هدف مشترکی ما و آلمان و اتحادیه اروپا داریم و اون هدف حفظ برجام و جلوگیری از تنش و درگیری در منطقه است و همینطور برخورداری مردم ایران از مزایای برجام with regard to the new round of sanctions that were announced over the weekend by the Trump administration, the Iranian foreign minister emphasized that the United States cannot declare an economic war against Iran and expect to remain safe. While the standoff between Washington and Tehran continues to persist, Minister Zarif underscored that while Iran will never start a war, it will destroy whoever invades it. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Thank you for watching us. I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank all of our supporters as your financial contributions and prayers are the reason all of our productions are made possible. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shavua Tov. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time.